Sam, and I'm speaking today about the 12th house in Vedic astrology, wrapping up the journey around the zodiac in evaluation or in evaluating the astrology houses. So we culminate with the 12th house, which is the place where those highest ambitions in the 11th house lead to the deepest losses in the 12th house. Highest gains, 11th house, deepest losses, 12th house. Gains, losses, ups and downs. The highest ambition and the highest gain we seek, that thing that you think, God, if I could just do that, wow, that would be amazing, leads to the awareness that, so what? It's futile. Again, I know I'm full of, I'm so full of good cheer and, and good news in these forecasts, but you know, what this means is that no matter how much you get, no matter how much sex, drugs, and rock and roll you get, you can't take it with you. And the 12th house is that ultimate loss, which is liberation itself. And that liberation is literally from life itself. So we have this illusion in the 11th house, our highest ambition, our highest desire that says, wow, I could do this, it could be amazing. Even if it's not just ruthless ambition to try to succeed and overcome your adversaries for your own personal glory in the world, like the person who's going to be king of the world and be the one who wins, right? That sort of debasing 11th house, even if it's not that, even if it's evolved, towards something like, boy, you know, it's not just about me winning, it's about me as part of the great, you know, social fabric of humanity and these, this big, this, this huge history of time and, and structures that outlive me and that will, that will sustain long after I'm gone. Boy, one day I could really make a difference and serve that beautiful thing. Even that, ultimately, is futile. And this is usually where, again, our highest energy kind of gets stuck. We all have this idea that, yes, one day I'll do this. My life will be amazing. And then there are people who do that. And many of them then realize, wow, that ain't it either. This is why you see things who achieve, see people who achieve these levels of mega fame and success and they win, they win. And then what do they have? Now they don't even have that dream anymore. They don't even have that big dream to strive for. They've accomplished it. Now what? The next dream? Well, where do I go from here? Where do I go from being, you know, John Lennon or Kurt Cobain? or, you know, you know, president, or what's next? Well, I better find something else. I better learn to let go of this expectation of accomplishment and achievement. And it happens on a smaller level as well. It happens when someone is climbing the corporate ladder as well. I get this level of accomplishment and then there's the feeling of loss afterwards. Oh, it's not what I thought. I have it, now reality sets in, it's like that wasn't it either. So maybe it's the next level, that's not it either. So the cycle of gain and loss in the highest sense is the 11th to the 12th house. The 12th house takes a lot of setting up, it takes a lot of planning to describe because we have hardly no really good experience with the 12th house. Meaning, we're usually not, not present in the 12th house, literally. It's where we tend to become unconscious. And it's very much unconscious energies that are not present. Because again, after that literally that 11th house is everything you imagine of yourself in the world. Everything that would revolve around your identity and you as an incarnated person. 
but in the highest, in the most amazing and powerful you, you could ever imagine it as you. That's the 11th house. What's, what's after that? What happens if you actually got that? Then what? That's the 12th house. Then the void. And that's literally what the 12th house is. It's that void. And the truth is, is the way that void usually feels to us is confusion. It's often called a house of liberation or a house of moksha, but that's not really the best way to look at the 12th house. It's like you'll hear, you know, especially a lot of astrology students or even people that kind of dance around astrology and teach yoga and stuff. But 12th house, it's a house of liberation, spiritual, and they'll use these words. You know, people always use these kind of words, but they're not putting any reality into it. Okay, the problem with the word liberation is it sounds so liberating. What you generally consider to be liberating is not what the 12th house is. The 12th house is loss, and yes, actually loss is very liberating. For instance, we want to be liberated from things that we don't want anymore. Like, we want to be liberated from our pain and suffering. That's really what we want to be liberated from. But we don't want liberation, because liberation is liberating all of it. You don't want liberation. You want to be liberated from your suffering, and you want to keep the good stuff. Again, this is actually the 11th and the 12th house. You want to keep the good stuff and keep getting more of it and more of it until you're like, amazing life, 11th house. But then what? Then comes the real liberation. And the more of that first thing you have, the more of that my life is amazing, the more liberation, ultimate liberation can be very hard because you have a great life. I live a great life. Now, by the time we start to meet that demise, we can let go of it more easily if we've accomplished a lot of what we came here to accomplish in the 11th house, then we can make peace with the 12th house much easier. But literally, what the 12th house is about, the main thing that we need to invoke in the 12th house is surrender. That's a very hard concept for our mind and our ego to grasp because it is literally the surrender of the ego. It's literally the letting go of who and what you think you are. And again, pretty much our whole identity revolves around that. In some ways, almost your whole identity revolves. It's like letting go of everything you are. And so the 12th house is actually that thing that's really, frankly, not of this world. And it's literally not of this world. It's the place of dreams. Literally, every night you fall asleep, you become unconscious in the 12th house. Your first house identity, your first house actions, will, identity, it recedes back into the 12th house. It goes, whoosh, I'm not me now, I'm an amorphous being. My identity is dissolved in the cosmic oneness. Every night you do it, every night you return to your true self. But you're unconscious when you do it, right? Yogis are not. A great yoga master, sorry, is conscious when they recede into their cosmic self. They do it consciously. We do it unconsciously. And then, so every night we recede into the 12th house. Then when we wake up, waking up means the 12th house gives way and we become the first house again. Oh yeah, me, my identity. And then we go out into the world through the second house to start eating and talking and then third house where we start pursuing all our interests and then fourth house they feel a certain way based on how they feel we love it or don't like it we work hard for it all that other stuff that i talked about in the other houses but then it comes around to the 11th house the highest most amazing life in the world and me and all of us and then nothing and then the void it's not because it's an actual void it's a void to your ego. It's a void to your mind. It's a nothingness to your ego. There's nothing to fill it with. There's no activity there. It's what you need to surrender into in order to connect with your true self that's not of this world, that true self that is emancipated. And it's about liberation and surrender, but again, 
liberation sounds so liberating, you usually feel it as loss. Loss of awareness, attention, money, health, and literally life itself, eventually. Right? But you want to understand something that's pretty trippy. <laughs> Consciously, in our life, in our life on Earth, we probably spend most of our time in aggregate in the 12th house because we spend a third of our life asleep. <laughs> right? And everything under the layer of consciousness, everything under that is 12th house, actually. It's literally sleep. And the different le levels of being and consciousness and awareness. So of all the houses, about a third of your life is spent in the 12th house. Right? I mean, of course, you, your physical body, you move around in, but and, and it has to do with like your physical body and being in your form, but then second house of your speech and your food and third house your interest, you're not always engaged in those activities, you're not always connected to your heart, at least not a third of the time of your whole life, but about a third of your life you're in the twelfth house. However, relative to our awareness and our focus and our true identity, uh, like the actual life we're living on earth, we probably spend the least amount of time authentically paying attention to 12th house things because the only thing to really do consciously in the 12th house, frankly, is meditate. That's about, that is literally the only thing to do. Like the action of the 12th house is surrender. But surrender is literally the absence of action. So this is why meditation is so hard because people sit down to meditate and of course meditation then becomes an action, becomes a goal, and all of those things that are in fact anathema to meditation becomes what we're doing when we're meditating. But meditation is actually all doing all of that stuff until eventually you surrender and you have grace that comes. All the meditation techniques are just things to do to get your awareness ready so that you'll eventually surrender. You can't consciously surrender. You can't say, okay, now I'm going to surrender. The very act itself is not surrender. So surrender is, is actually to just literally give up. To consciously recede. To have your identity recede into the void. The void is the twelfth house. When your identity starts to merge with the void, or what feels like the void, then the void becomes alive. And you, as pure consciousness and awareness, fills that void. Because that void has no boundary. That void has no limitation. This dog and this ball. It's over here. I have to get this dog's ball. Look. Here it is. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Got a little derailed. The dog lost his ball. So, literally, the void is just an opening. And now, we fill that opening with our unconsciousness. In, with sleep. Now that void is filled with sleep. And the surrender is unconscious, un, undirected. It overtakes us. It's not something that we are willfully engaged in. Meditation is a lot like sleep. Have you ever noticed when you try to meditate you fall asleep? They're similar. But again, meditation is willful, where you engage your will. You willfully surrender. Willful surrender is meditation. That's willful surrender. Unwillful surrender is sleep, where 
eventually we just collapse and we go into the unconscious. So the 12th house is the repository of everything in your conscious mind, just below the level of consciousness, then subconscious, then unconscious, and past lives. The past lives are mainly in the unconscious. The subconscious is made mostly of this lifetime. And then what's closer to the subconscious is all those things day to day or month to month, year to year, the things that you're involved in are just below the surface. That's why when you fall asleep, you have a lot of dreams about things you might have done that day or those are very close to the surface. And then the dreams maybe go a little deeper for the last month or year or so. And then a lot of that is subconscious but then unconscious starts to get awakened once you go into deeper level, levels of meditation. Your unconscious is really the past lives. Those are things that you're just not conscious of. And those, un it doesn't mean it's not real. In fact, the deeper you go into the unconscious, the more, this is where your karma lies, unconscious triggers. Subconscious is more easy, like you can say, oh yeah, that's some sort of subconscious thing going on connected to something that we might remember from this lifetime and whatnot, and they're related. But unconscious are things that, like, we, we don't know. And so, again, what happens in the 12th house through meditation is you illuminate that unconscious, subconscious dream state, and then that awareness your identity starts to penetrate the void consciously and starts to illuminate what is now dark and unconscious and subconscious for you. Planets in the 12th house or when there's a lot of planets there in someone's chart or people who run a lot of 12th house energy, they're not very present to certain things. They're blind spots. They're unconscious about a lot of things and they run a lot of unconscious subconscious energy. They don't see what they're doing. Like if you get 7th house ruler in the 12th house, then the person just, they're not aware of what they're doing in the relationships, or they have a hard time staying attached. When planets are in the 12th house, we have a hard time staying attached to it. Like we said, 11th house, planets do well in the 11th house here yeah, because we're ambitious and kind of ruthless. In the 12th house, we tend to not be paying attention or we tend to want to escape into that thing. That's why it's related to foreign travels, you know, things like ashrams or drugs, unconsciousness, jail. These are the kinds of things where we're isolated, where we're kind of encased in, either in confusion, and sometimes the confusion makes us act in ways, again, that are harmful. But often it's also where people, if they can activate those energies, they can easily meditate, they can easily withdraw their fascination with the world and go into a deeper state of self-awareness because that those planets in the 12th house are compelling them toward that sort of power. The planets are power, right? So again, you never want to get into good and bad, but it's just the power to do this thing or that thing. and. Again, the power to meditate is not necessarily the power to have a good relationship or to have a good career or the or to, you know, or to be healthy or whatever it is because they're different energies, they're different powers. <laughs> My 12th house is a little bit paying attention to the girl and her dog. So, that's the 12th house. Very tricky, interesting. Talk about this, that one a little longer. And it's that in-between life state. It's that state between your high ambitions and your true identity. Notice how people with the high ambitions, let's say someone like a, a great philanthropist, you know, or a great humanitarian. They accomplish that thing then there's loss and confusion in the 12th house. Then the first house starts over again and there's a new cycle of identity. Oh, I thought I was trying to succeed to win the game of life. And now I realize all that ambition wasn't worth it either with the losses of the 12th house. So this is who I am now, the first house. It starts over. 
highest ambitions, gains, wanting to help and serve, losing and realizing nothing I'm going to accomplish in this world is going to be the ultimate and then facing that confusion and that chasm to regenerate ourselves and to see ourselves and our identity on another level. Look at the tragedies of people who make it and then don't know how to handle it, you know, like people like Kurt Cobain, suicide. He accomplished what he wanted and then then what? If you don't know yourself, then you just become isolated. You become you you tune out, you get into escapism. You don't want to face the confusion that what do I have to strive for now? That means that's the facing the void. And if we face the void without awareness, there's there can be no reason to even live. So ponder the twelfth house and moksha, the highest liberation, letting go of life itself. First you know, the fourth house, the first moksha house was where we let go of our desires and check in with our heart. The eighth house of moksha or liberation is where we let go of other people. Seventh house to eighth house, remember? Eighth house is where we get freedom from people. Fourth house was our personal freedom in our heart. Eighth house is freedom from people. Twelfth house is freedom and liberation from the world itself and the matrix of ambition. One day I'm going to make it. One day it'll be great. Most people, their life energy is, is hung up in that. One way or another, there's something beyond that. And often we don't have to accomplish the greatest thing ever. We can, we can see the same pattern in any accomplishment, that ambition, accomplishment, disappointment cycle. I got this thing, it wasn't what I thought. And then I got the next thing, that wasn't what I thought either. 11th house, 12th house. What is this sinking feeling that nothing I do here is going to work out? That's the 12th house and the awareness that we've been doing this for lifetimes and we're actually connecting with that every night when we go to sleep <laughs> pretty crazy so instead of being unconscious in the twelfth house you want to be conscious in the twelfth house through meditation spiritual practices notice planets that are in the twelfth house or the twelfth house ruler itself is not really of this world so planets that are in the twelfth house especially what they rule wind up being hard to hold on to because they're tuned into that thing that's not really of this world and they're trying to always kind of escape from it like uh not this yeah maybe this relationship it's in the 12th house it's like no that's disappointing or whatever it is so i hope you've enjoyed this group of videos on the astrology houses